right so i was gonna check the consistency for this team that i'm using to farm full auto stage 30 of the odin uh event dungeon when tickle raids um hit me up and he slid up in my dms and was like hey burrito how's it going um did you know that there's going to be a specific event for the odin event dungeon and i was like what because I was going to let this go as long as possible to see how consistent it was. What, you know, Is this a 100% team? Uh, so far, I've done 16 and it hasn't failed. I actually did 12 or sorry, I did 14 on my way home from work today. I just kind of let it let it run um, from the moment I left work and there were no fails there. So, you know, about like 30 runs without a fail using this team. Nakage, um, Alatreon. Sun Wukong, Sun Wukong, actually, that's how you pronounce it. Um, Sun Wukong, uh, Pythion, and WTD, Walking Tomb Drang. So, how are you guys doing in terms of the gear that you're getting? Mainly, we're working for pinpoint gear, right? Crit damage is cool, pretty much everything else is shit. I wanted to go ahead and take a look at everything I've gathered so far. Like, we have this pinpoint here, it's a six star epic accessory. We have a six star legendary weapon here. And I wanted to go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. But this is the team here. Now, this team wasn't exactly something that I came up with. This was a combination of pretty much everybody's effort, right? So it was a combination of me trying to solve the issues that Odin was presenting to me at the time that I was climbing through the stages, as well as you guys in the comments giving me tips and tricks, as well as... Um, people in my discord giving me hints as well so makagi is going to be here for stuns controls buff removals uh, i actually have another video talking a little bit more into depth about this team the only difference between that team and this team is pytheon but uh, if you want to refer to that you can check that out it's the video right before this one alatran is going to be here for the block debuffs as well as the cleanse and the shield got a six star blessing oh they both have six star blessings so cruelty helps to decrease the defense alatran's gonna help with the brimstone that actually does a lot look he did 1.5 million damage himself sun wukong support sun wukong he's going to be able to place the block buffs and do the buff strip it's extremely helpful to have both block buffs as um as a buff oh sorry a block debuff buff that always stumbles me. It's imperative to have a block debuff buff as well as a block debuffs. Block buff. Debuff. Yeah. From Sun Wukong on Odin and the entire team because, as you guys already know, Odin is placing block damage every single turn. In fact, let me just go ahead and run this while we talk about this. After that, we're going to... So we start off stun we want to make sure we're controlling the enemy as best as possible he tries to place the stun on us he tries to take our buffs but because alatreon is here placing protected buffs we don't get debuffed and we don't get our buffs stolen you see that brimstone popping off now we also have um the block debuffs or block buffs debuff on that's from sun wukong extremely helpful wtd is going to be here for heals as well as hp burns so as I was going through this, I was trying to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to deal with the fact that I'm always running into health issues? Well, Walking Tomb Drang is my doctor here because he is going to give us a full heal. Now, this is a weird situation where Mikage actually died, but that's also why we have Pytheon here. Walking Tomb Drang heals with his A3. It's a HP match, so whoever has the highest HP is going to... Um, be the representation of how big the heal is going to be that's it's basically equalizing ap the same as sinesha walking to drink also places the irresistible hp burns so the high accuracy requirement that's needed for this stage to place the hp burns aren't needed and every time somebody has an hp burn ticked off it doesn't matter if it's on the ads or on odin himself everybody's going to be receiving 138 or at least odin is going to be taking 138 damage pytheon is here in case we need extra what do you call it um in case we need extra heals and we need extra debuff cleanses and his passive allows for us to have some damage mitigation for however many buffs we have up so right now we have 
pretty that overlay that you see popping up over his head that's his passive the more buffs you have the more damage mitigation you're going to have then he places the strengthen whenever you revive somebody and that's always helpful so uh, oh and uh pytheon also heals on his a1 it was imperative that i had a reviver here i had to choose between duchess and pytheon and in this sense in this case pytheon was actually doing more for me than duchess was duchess does have a continuous heal she revives she does have her passive that decreases the damage from aoe moves but i think because not everybody is doing aoe moves here just having a flat out damage mitigation from pytheon was going to do a lot better for me in terms of keeping us alive so this all together is what is allowing me to take down this dungeon most of the damage in fact all of the damage is basically coming from hp burns whenever they can land right so if you were able to speed tune this you could probably make this a lot better this is not going to be the fastest run ever but it's been consistent all right it's been consistent with me so far so i'm just checking one of my videos um this hasn't failed me yet i don't know if it's 100 percent but again, it hasn't failed me yet. This is my most consistent team so far, and I've tried a few different teams, a few different variations. I am also going to show you guys uh, another team that I have that I, I was taking your guys' advice in the comments. Somebody said to try using Nut and Acrisias and everything, so we're going to go ahead and try that. I did use resets. Somebody recommended using resets. The reason I didn't want to do that in the first place, why I was trying to build a team like this, uh, you know, there's, there's different reasons, right? So the first thing was I was trying to do a challenge where I didn't use any cheese, quote unquote, champions. So no Krizia, no Newts, no um, Armands, no Seers. And I also wanted to try and do it without any cooldowns or any um, reset champions. Now that I've completed that and this is my team here, I am ready and willing to, or I was ready and willing to try out different teams. But to be honest, those teams that I've put together um, even though they're faster, like my best time is a minute and 22 seconds, that's with a double reset. I am just sort of sticking with this on this account. So the other team that I have, I'll show you guys this build, these builds here soon. The other team that I have is, what is it? Uh, I think it's this one. Oh, okay. So I was experimenting, right? So this team here is a little bit more consistent. I was well, more consistent than using Yumiko and Kaimar, because I was using this team here. In fact, I'll show you. I'll, I'll run it on manual so you can see how how it looks like. Um, I was using Yumiko and Kaimar together. Let's go ahead and run this. So the way this works is we're going to place the hex on Odin, then we're going to place the sleep here, then we're going to place the block buffs block debuffs so that when he does this move we don't receive any damage the, the the crappy thing here is he has block damage up so now i can't do anything i kind of have to wait until this goes away it's a really annoying mechanic if i could get sun wukong faster this might help we do get the buffs stolen here we're going to push valkyrie back and then we're going to do this luckily get the freeze off and we're going to place the shields. Again, this is a manual run and RNG isn't lining up exactly as I had the first time I got my, my best time. But I'm just showing you guys. So you may, maybe it's going to help you guys. I, I don't know. Maybe this will help somebody. Who knows? So we're going to... Let's actually do this. Let's sheep you. We're going to sheep you. We're going to... Is this a full reset? We're going to skip this time and then we're going to wait for Yumiko to reset and then we're gonna reset with Kaimar after that because Kaimar does a full reset instead of a cooldown reset so we don't want that now we're going to reset here okay we don't have we, because we have this here we're not going to worry about them getting the block damage buff Sun Wukong is stunned we're going to reset again here and boost turn meter cleanse alatran is just huge for this place block buffs again with sun wukong don't have to worry about it and then we're going to place the hex here and then newt just needs to do his move here boom boom and that's basically how it how you do it 
Now, if I was gonna manual my runs, this would be a pretty good team to run. So I'm gonna keep this team in in mind. The other thing that I've done, in fact, let me just let me set the presets here. Let me let me let me check this one. Let me let me see here. Oh wait, no, that's oh. So I've made multiple teams. <laughs> I've, I've made this team, and I've also made this team here. These are preset set. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna. It's the same team, but with presets already set, and I'm just gonna run it and see how it does. Oh, the difference here is I think uh, Arbit is here. Never mind, that is different. Arbit is here, and she's here to boost your turn meter because somebody also suggested, hey, get your turn meter up. So that's this, and then they were like, oh, use Kaimar to remove it. But uh, you know, it just wasn't. It doesn't always work out that way. So I was. I keep messing around with the teams to see how things uh, change. And of course, Armand is here doing his thing. I like his buff removal, but oftentimes it's it's too little too late and we're missing the block damage buff, debuff. And it's weird because the block damage doesn't always go away. It's weird. Like right now, it didn't go away. You see what I mean? So this isn't like the best team. Eventually I'm gonna get ganked here. Like right here, I'm gonna get ganked. So I'm, I'm not even gonna entertain this. But when I was running it on manual, let me take this off, uh, it was doing fairly well. This team also is a little bit more consistent because we're able to add the block debuffs and block buffs. And we have the reset here with some CC coming from our mons. So let's run this on, on auto, just kind of let things play out, see how, how it works. The staple for, you know, these concepts are basically having Alatreon and uh, block buffs in Sun Wukong, Sun Wukong. But the other team that I had with WTD and Pytheon and Makage, the, it's more consistent, I would say. Because they're, you know, keeping everybody alive and keeping uh, just everything flowing proper. see how long this one takes this is a uh, not too bad actually it's not it's not going too badly get the freeze off maybe yeah we got the freeze on that ursuga ursuga brimstone yeah we got cr bad luck we got we got hit with the uh yeah so we'll see how this can we can Sun, Sun Wukong do his thing uh oh the other thing I like about having Sun Wukong here is that because he is built so weak, weakly, he is the one that's always getting targeted. And because he's always getting targeted, I don't really have to worry too much about the other champions dying from Turvold or anybody, uh, because Sun Wukong is the one who's being targeted. Kind of like if you do that cheese strat with Cronum and Amius, Amius just targets, damn. He got the blessed bash. So... The cookie's not crumbling the best way here. Hey, Gino. But yeah, unless Sun Wukong has a bunch of buffs up or the block damage buff up, Turvold will target him and kill him, and then Sun Wukong just comes back. Boom. Need to get that block buffs up. Damn it, Odin. Die. No shot. Oh my god, I, I knew it. I called it. I was like, it's not going to work. So as you see, it's already around 2 minutes and 30 seconds. If I'm letting this run on full auto, then this is the likelihood. And uh, you can see it's already unlikely to be 100%. The goal here is always, at least for me, I'm not saying this is what you guys have to do. The goal for me is always to do my best to get a full auto team. Like, I don't want to sit there picking champions and targeting all the time and, and all that. Like, I want to be able to just throw it down on my phone and watch a movie or something or record something else or go back to playing Black Myth Wukong, which I am currently playing on my other channel. If you're interested in that, I'll link that down in the um, comment, the pinned comment down below. If, if you want, 
if you want, if you're interested in, in horror games or anything like that. So as you can see, this works too, but it's not ideal um, just because it, it just doesn't feel like a full auto tune. I was also going to jump onto my other accounts and see how they do here, but let me go ahead and show you the presets and I'll dig into the builds. I'll dig into this build right here because this is like the one that I'm going to be running for the most part. So you can see the stats here, but I'm going to point out basically the presets where you transform, you prioritize the A2. And I'm not saying this is the way to do things. I'm saying this is what's currently working for me. Alatran, uh, Alatran you're doing the cleanse and then you're doing the shield. Sun Wukong, you're prioritizing the block buffs. If you don't prioritize this too, this um, A2 as priority two, he's not going to use this move. It's just going to be the A1 and his A3. So if you want to use the sheep ability, go ahead and prioritize that. And there's no priority set here, but I mean, if you really wanted to, you could set this up. And now that I'm looking at it, it kind of doesn't make sense to have this block debuffs go up and then him immediately place block debuffs here. Maybe we should uh, open up there and then let a turn flow out. And then of course we're doing HP burns first with Drang. If you wanted to see the other teams that I'm using, for an example, this one, it's nuts obvious preset is A1. Alatran, same thing. Sun Wukong, same thing. Armand's open with the A2 to stun and then sheep with the A3 or, or sheep and, and um, remove buffs. And then for uh, for Kaimar, because he's going so fast, you want to make sure you're uh, doing the A1 here and then resetting after people have used their moves. For this one, kind of the same thing. Obvious ones, Arbiter, Terminator Boost. Yumiko, you want to open with the A1, let Nut do his thing. Here, same thing. You want to delay a few turns so that Yumiko can do her reset first and then Kaimar will do his reset. Armand's same thing here. All right, so I'm gonna show you some of those key champions in case you're wondering how I've built them. Makage, nine piece protection. I'll try to breeze through these really quickly. Um, the protection set is basically because of Hydra. You can see the specific pieces of gear here. You're focusing on speed and accuracy, but because in her second form, she doesn't really place buffs, you don't really have to worry about putting in her protection set. You can just worry about speed and accuracy. All you care about is that she is controlling the enemies and the turn meters of the enemies with her stun ability. And that's basically it. Oh, well, the buff removal as well. Increased accuracy helps as well. You could put her in the lead for extra 80 points of accuracy. If you got cruelty, that helps out. You could put her in brimstone too. Nothing wrong with that. She does not have any masteries. I have yet to do that. For those wondering how I have my Rotos built, simple nuker builds, uh, speed, crit rate, crit damage, uh, speed, crit rate, crit damage, HP, and attack. Here are the specific pieces of gear. In fact, I don't know why I'm showing you guys this one because uh, I'm not, I didn't show this run, but uh, there you go. And then taking those masteries as well. Ale oh, uh, what do you call it? Pythion. Pythion is going to be in a bolster set. The bolster set is going to start off by giving your allies, everybody on the team, 30% of HP protected and then heals Pythion by 10% every time he takes a turn. Pythiod is great because you're going to want a reviver, somebody to bring back your dead allies in the event that they do die, just like Makage did in that run. You're focusing on speed and survivability stats for the most part and resistance. This is my arena Pythion. Not exactly the best, so I don't use him that much. Here are the stats. You're looking for speed, resistance, and survivability stats here. You care about the heals off of the A1, the heals and the block buffs from his A2 and the revives and the strengthen from his A3, as well as this big passive here, up to 25% of damage mitigation for every buff that's on them. And then polymorph for his um, blessing, or what do you call it, the, uh, yeah, blessing. As always, do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries. I'll try and blade master, six star blessing, huge one. Can't get him anymore, but if you can find somebody or at least put them in a protect set, somebody who places the um, block debuff, that's going to be huge. You want Alatreon to be taking as many turns as possible so he can bang out those skills. Um, yeah, bang out his skills. He's got the increased defense and the shield on the A2, protected again. His A1 has a chance to increase buff duration, and that's huge. Fills turn meter every time a debuff is placed on them. 
heals by 5% whenever their max HP, whenever a debuff is placed on them or uh, is expired or removed. You could also run them in the lead. 30% is pretty nice. Odin, the event dungeon counts as a as a dungeon, so this counts. Brimstone was popping off at uh, six star blessing. It's protected, guaranteed. Do keep in mind there is a cooldown. So if for some reason you do get three percented, it's absolute freaking bullshit, right? But if you do get if you do get resisted on a guaranteed protected smite with a six star blessing, which I don't think you should. It doesn't make sense that it should, but trust me. Uh, we verified this in, in the in the CC Discord. This happens, you can get 3%ed on this, and you have to wait for this cooldown to finish. It's it's stupid. Here are the specific pieces of gear. Relentless, looking for speed and survivability stats here. Speed on the boots, HP, HP defense. Here are the total stats. HP, defense, 270 speed, resistance if you can get him. I've also used him in hard 10 ice golem. Here are the specific stats. Uh, masteries, taking bulwark also to help out with damage mitigation. It just helps out all around. Armands, if you're looking for a build on Armands, this is the way I have, I've had Armands. Not the best build because he's slow and he doesn't have enough accuracy, but this is just what I wanted to uh, do for now. Eventually I'll rebuild him, make him better. And you're looking for speed and accuracy on him. Got the quad roll here. And then accuracy and resistance. Resistance, you're going to want resistance because he's liable to get sheeped. And um, I have more resistance than I do accuracy with him. I should bump up that accuracy. And that speed because he's relatively slow. But that's just what I have in supersonic gear. Which uh, boosts his uh, turn meter. Turn meter by 2% for every buff on each enemy and decreases turn meter effects placed by enemies on him to 30% per 30 less effective. I'm trying to get him, I'm trying to get him in a nine piece. Now here are the uh, get you guys. I don't think he actually needs an introduction to be honest, but here are the buffs. Taking accuracy. Sun Wukong, you're going to see him in a protection or per perception build. All you care about, here are the specific pieces of gear, is speed and accuracy. You want that block buff and steal to, buff steal to happen. So 229 speed, if I can get him faster, I would. And then 809 accuracy, remember it's about 889 when he goes in with Makagi in the lead. You care about this here. Polymorph is pretty nice too. Here are the masteries, you get, uh, I got accuracy and the counter attack masteries on him. For Newt, he is going to be in lethal because I want him to ignore as much enemy defense as possible. I have This is my Newt for pretty much every dungeon that I use him in and Perception, and I use him in my Nightmare Hydra team. This move is just absolutely insane. We got Soul Reap on him. I'm thinking about changing this because I don't like how it pauses the, um, the deaths of certain enemies and waits for the Reaper to come out. kind of adds time. You could also put Nut in the lead for 80 points of extra accuracy, just like Makage. And um, the freeze from his A1 helps out every now and then too. So here are the specific pieces of gear. You're looking for speed, damage, accuracy, and resistance. But if you're only if you're not going to use him in something like Hydra, then you're basically just looking for uh, damage. And if you're not going to use him in the hard Fire Knight, then yeah, it's just pretty much damage. But if you're looking to use him in the Fire Knight, you're going to want to place this freeze for decreasing the turn meter. You're going to need accuracy for that. Here are the total stats speed crit rate crit damage um defense and accuracy and like pretty much everything if you're trying to get him in a lethal set if you can do better do better giant slayer more consistency in terms of damage although i do like helm smasher and counterattack masteries as well these, these are the masteries and then who else do we have if you wanted to see arbiter uh arbiter doesn't really need an introduction she's been around you probably already know just put her in as make her as fast as you can let's see here uh who a oh, walking tomb drang regen and immortal this is my solo drang so basically doesn't die always getting heals 18 percent heal every single turn so make sure you're getting survivability stats as well as speed We also have emergency heal on him. Every time his shield expires or is broken or removed, he's going to heal a little bit. And we actually have a blood shield banner on him. So whenever he does attack, he gets a little bit of a shield. 
And this is the main thing we're looking for here, as well as this. I mean, those are the two things, but you guys get what I'm saying. So HP burns, irresistible, and equalizing of HP. Here are the masteries, taking resistance. But you could, don't, don't blindly copy these masteries. These were actually for um, Ice Golem. I was using them in Ice Golem. Uh, I think that's everybody, right? I still have yet to get to stage 30 on this account, but for now I'm running stage 20 on this account. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna work on this eventually, but um, you know, it's just gonna take a little bit of time for me to work on my second account. But this is the team that I have, and it's basically uh, just a, a nuke team. You're just using ally attack to pound out Odin to basically bend him over and put everything you have inside of him. Um, no ditty though. And when everything lines up, it's a two second run. So for this, I mean, Makage is gonna be built the same. Rhodus is gonna be built the same. I guess I'll show you Lydia, Harima, and Georgid. So Harima basically built like a nuker with defense instead of attack. Uh, Rhodos, same thing. Georgid, same exact thing. Make sure they're going fast enough. I think the only difference is probably Lydia. I haven't shown you Lydia. Let me show you Lydia. Lydia, you're looking for accuracy and speed, so 301, and then 526 accuracy. Broken sets, uh, I'm gonna have to rebuild her because I wanna make sure she's gonna you know, perform better, and I'd, I'd like to get her in a hex set as, as well. Although I don't think I use her in, I don't think I've used her in Hydra in a while. Let me see here. Oh no, I have, but because my what do you call it? Nia's are in hex. I don't really have to worry about Lydia being in a hex set, but still, I should. <laughs>